Hello and welcome to the Global Book Club's discussion video for the first 10 chapters of Mother of Pearl, a novel by Melinda Haynes. My name is Steve, warm golf wind here on YouTube, and I'm here to start the discussion. I hope that you'll take part in the discussion in the comment section below and consider making video responses, sharing your own opinions about the first 10 chapters of the novel. First, I thought I would draw your attention to the quotes at the beginning of the novel. Sophocles was an ancient Greek playwright, and this is what he had to say about fate. Fate has terrible power. You cannot escape it by wealth or war. No fort will keep it out. No ships outrun it. Now the second quote is from William Faulkner, who, as one of the commenters on this novel mentioned, is a writer who focuses on characters of the South, and like Melinda Haynes, he loves his characters and wants well for them. So right away we get a hint that Haynes is going to write this novel from the point of view from Southern characters and explore the idea of fate as it applies to their life. One of the ideas that I wanted to put out there about this novel, and in particular the first 10 chapters, where Haynes introduces us to all the main characters and in particular their own version of the reality of the South. Often the scenes are hard to read because they're graphic. The reference to even at the plant when the explosion happens, it's very graphic and him walking into town without his shirt and all he can think of is he doesn't have his shirt on and then the explanation of it to Canaan is is very graphic and sad. Even the first reference to a bottle flying out of a car and striking Canaan on the bridge and leaving that question mark scar on his forehead, that's very sad. Uh, Valuable's relationship with her mother, uh, the fact that her mother's down the hall and has clearly no boundaries and isn't protecting Valuable in a in a way that we would like to see a parent protect their child and raise them. Even's adventure in the hardware store where clearly Even is one of the most upstanding people in this whole community, but because of the color of his skin, he is treated like a second-class citizen and even has to wait for the children to finish chewing their gum and telling little stories before he served, and then he has to listen to this goober, this, this idiot man. Because he's white, he gets the, the privilege of talking down to even, even though even is quite intelligent and clearly more intuitive and intelligent than this man, even has to listen to this man tell him about meanness and don't go writing things on the side of bridges with this paint. Clearly even it has no intention of vandalizing anything. It's a gift for his girlfriend and that can be sad as a reader to go through these moments and and oh isn't this depressing and I'd much rather be doing something else and can't we read a happy book. But I like to float it out there that this is the reality that these characters have to deal with and Melinda Haynes has to show us this reality before she can show us the fight between their fate, are they doomed to this forever, or do they have a choice? Is there, are there moments in life where they will, because she loves them, and you can tell, I think, that she loves them, and we grow to become attached to them, I hope, is there going to be a moment for these loved characters to break free or take their lives into their own hands, away from fate, away from poverty, away from, well, away from the fate of poverty, away from the fate of lynching or, or death or horrible labor jobs for the rest of your life, um, is even doomed to be the poor orphan who is unloved, is valuable, doomed to never find out who her father is, um, these things must be mentioned in all their gory detail before they can be dealt with, before they can become a struggle for something better. So I'd like to put it out there that 
Melinda Haynes is such a talented novelist, such a talented writer that I think that we can have faith in her that there's a reason for the depressing, there's a reason for the sad, and it's not just uh, a wallowing and a, oh poor us and let's talk about sad unfortunate things and wallow. I think she's going somewhere with this and I think if we stick with her she will get there. I wanted also to mention uh, the references that uh, Melinda Haynes makes in this novel and a few people have mentioned um, uh, Harper Lee's novel uh, to, Kept, to Kill a Mockingbird. Now I think that Evans' trip down the street uh, past Valuable's home and Valuable's mother out on the on the lawn suggestively dressed and mentioning over and over again that Felix will be gone till Monday, Monday hint hint come on over um, is a reference to characters in Kill, To Kill a Mockingbird and I don't think that in any way this novel is a a copy of To Kill a Mockingbird. The tone is completely different. Uh, to Kill a Mockingbird is told from the perspective of the white children who are relatively poor but they are privileged because they are white and have to be taught the differences between treating someone good and treating someone well and treating someone with bigotry. They would not know otherwise that a black man would be just as equal to a white man or that he would be subjected to bigotry because of the color of his skin even when it's clear that he did nothing wrong. Uh, this novel is not f mostly from the perspective of just one race. It's, it's everyone's perspective is taken into consideration here. And I think that Valuable's mother on the street corner is suggesting that she could have sex with uh, even that she's ready and available is a reference to Mayala Ewell and the Shifa robe and uh, the mixing of people who, uh, whose statuses are low in the community and yet even a poor white person will be dominant over uh, a black person. I also wanted to make a mention of the character of Valuable and float out the idea again that Haynes has a purpose for what she's doing. I think that we are supposed to have a difficulty identifying with Valuable. She's a 14 year old girl and she doesn't have much on her mind except figuring out who her father was and figuring out what she's supposed to do with her life, but not in any great detail. She doesn't have anyone to lead her and guide her. Her grandmother is dead now. Her mother is clearly incapable of being a mother. And she's left on her own. And so I think that her ideas are simple and she's basic and she's just there. The events of her life are important for the novel, but the depth of her character is not because she's only 14, she's only a child, she has no real depth of character yet. And I believe that that is how we are supposed to perceive her and it's not a weakness on the side of the author, it has a purpose and a reason. I personally identify a lot more with Even and his emotional quest and he wants to be close to people. Um, Judy's desire to be different to keep herself separate and safe and yet she wants to fall in love with even. Um, Joe Lieb's a little hard to get into because he's so awkward and young and goofy but he also has a reason for seeking out advice. He's in pain and in trouble and it seems that most of the characters have an aspect of pain, an aspect of something they need to work on but it doesn't make them, as Judy says, six-sided. God bless the three-sided woman. Uh, these people are struggling and they're not complete and they're not full and we're not supposed to fully and completely identify with each and every character. 
they all share the goal of achieving something in their lives, dealing with their past, and in order to get into every single character, they'd all have to have their own novel. But I don't think it's just practical consideration. I think that Haynes actually wants us to see parts of what it's like to be human through these many different characters, and we're meant to identify more closely, I think, with even than valuable, than Jolieb, than certainly Jolieb's aunt and uncle, aunt and father. Well, I'm not quite sure if they've been introduced in the first ten chapters yet, but there's a reason for the simpleness of Valuable's 14-year-old existence. It's because she's 14 and very sheltered in, a, in an unusual way from the rest of the world. So, those are some ways in which Melinda Haynes introduces us to the characters of this novel and lets us know what she's going to be talking about for the rest of the novel. Are we determined to live out the, faith of, the fate of our parents? Uh, our, is our life determined based on the color of our skin, based on how poor we are, based on who our parents are? based on our religious beliefs or lack of religious beliefs? Are we fated to have one unchangeable ending or can we work towards something better for ourselves? I hope that you're enjoying the novel and I hope that you will take part in the discussion and I will see you next time for chapters 10 through 20. Bye now.